Welcome to my Rayman 3 Fan Remake Devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. All right, let's dive in. So episode two. In this one, I'm gonna go over how I tried to make Rayman's basic movement. So running, jumping, gliding, and hanging onto edges. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's first analyze Rayman's movement as this will kind of show us what our goals are. The movement is very snappy. There's pretty much no deceleration when I let go of the movement keys. Also, in jumping, while jumping, Rayman can freely change the jump direction. So it's kind of like there's no momentum that's there from the jump. It's just, just the player's input. Also, running has this interesting behavior where when I hold the forward key, it, everything seems normal. But when I start running to the side, Rayman doesn't actually run sideways. He starts running around the camera. It's kind of like holding the left or right key causes Rayman to rotate perpendicular to the camera and then start moving forward. Or, yeah. Same with moving backwards. He first rotates to face the camera and then starts moving forward in his local forward axis, if you know what I mean. This system has this kind of funny effect where you can actually run sideways by just hitting the back and forth keys. I tried fiddling with the built-in Unreal Engine movement controller for a little while, but since it's force-based, so it has stuff like friction and acceleration, I wasn't able to replicate the snappy Rayman movement that we all remember from the original game. That's why I tried to make my own movement controller, because it was important for me to not make this feel like another Unreal Engine 5 game with just the Rayman skin on it. I wanted to actually feel like the original game, but with better graphics. So to start off, I made a new C++ class for the player character. Let me explain why I'm using C++ here. As I was learning Unreal Engine, at this point, I finished this course on Udemy, where they do pretty much everything in C++. If C++ isn't your jam, however, don't worry, neither is it mine. As the project went on, I found myself using more and more blueprints and less less C++. So in the videos to come, you're definitely gonna see more blueprint related stuff. It's just that I find blueprints very intuitive and easy to use. As someone who doesn't have a programming background, trying to write stuff in C++ was, it's just difficult. And I find myself spending way too much time in the Unreal documentation, not really understanding much anyway. So I will assume that most people are interested more in blueprints. So for the C++ stuff, I will go over all the logic that I've made, but I will not go too in depth in the code itself. If I'm wrong here, please leave a comment and I will maybe make some more follow-up videos on the stuff that I have in my code. But for now, this is how we're gonna do it. Coming back from that little tangent, I choose a pawn class as my parent class. As it's written here, this is pretty much what you want whenever you wanna make something that can be controlled by the player. There's also the character class, but as I said, I wanna make it pretty much from scratch, so I want something more basic. So here in code, I start by initializing a couple necessary components that I'm gonna need for my player class, and that's the capsule component for handling collision and movement, the skeletal mesh component for actually, for the actual player model, and a player camera. Don't worry about the movement component and the health component, I'll come back to those later. So then I made a blueprint class out of my C++ class, set the skeletal mesh component to a Rayman model, tweaked the capsule component size a little bit, and changed the player camera location. The Rayman model you see on screen is a model made by me. I will go over making it in a future video, but the animations are ripped straight from the original game. On the Rayman Pirate community forums, somebody posted Blender files with all the characters and their animations ripped from the original games. 
I think the animations hold up really well. They're very cartoonish. So I decided not to remake them as that would take a lot of time and I don't even think I would make a better job. So the next step was to set up player input. I have dipped my toes before in Unreal Engine 4 input mapping, but Unreal Engine 5 has this new thing called enhanced input mapping. And to be honest, I don't really get it. It's probably just my smooth brain, but setting the whole thing up, especially in C++ is just way too complex for me. And I will never be able to remember the whole process without referring to some kind of documentation or, or checking a tutor video tutorial. But, but I digress, I eventually got it to work. So I started super simple from the beginning, just getting Rayman to move forward without any jumping, any gravity, any collision. And here's how I do it. My input, so whatever comes in whenever I press the arrow keys, is a 2D vector. The x-axis for the left and right arrow keys and the y-axis for the up and down arrow keys. So I take its length and set it as my input value. That's because I want Rayman to move forward no matter if I press the forward key, back key, left or right key, or a combination of any of those. Because like we discussed earlier, his side movement comes from him rotating to the side we want to move and not him actually moving sideways. So now whenever I'm holding any of the directional keys, my input length will be one. And whenever none of them are held, my input length will be zero. I'll explain this clamp in a moment. Then I set my run velocities x component that I created earlier to be equal to itself plus the input value times acceleration times delta time. Acceleration is a value that I can set in the Rayman blueprint to determine how fast Rayman will accelerate. And delta time is the time between frames in milliseconds. This is necessary so the movement is frame independent. Otherwise Rayman would walk faster if you played at 60 FPS compared to, for example, 30 FPS. And then I clamp my run velocity to a max speed so the acceleration doesn't speed Rayman up indefinitely. Here at the end, I'm multiplying this whole thing times input value. I'm doing this so whenever I let go of the directional keys, Rayman will stop and not keep moving. Because if none of the directional keys are held, then input value is equal zero, so run velocity will also become zero. Now, let me get back to why I clamp the input length so the minimal value of 0.75 is there because I scale Rayman's run animation with his speed. So if the speed is very slow, the animation looks a little wonky. And it also actually feels a little better to play if your walk speed is easier to keep consistent. Now for the upper limit of 1, that's there because I actually lied to you a little bit. The input value length isn't always 1 or 0. If you hold two keys at once, like for example, the forward key and the right key, then the vector length is actually larger than one. So holding a combination of these keys would let you accelerate faster than if you just held the forward key. So this clamp fixes that little thing. Okay, so this is it for making Raymond move forward. And then I wanted to figure out that running behavior that we discussed in the beginning of the video where when I hold the right or left key, he's gonna run around the camera. And when I hold the back key, he's gonna run towards the camera. This is where I decided that I'm gonna make a different actor that's not parented to Raymond in any way. That's gonna kind of act like a cameraman following Raymond around. However, I wanna cover the camera stuff in the next video, so stay tuned. So here's how I solve rotating Rayman in relation to the camera's rotation. So I make a new 2D vector, 0, 1, and I call it my input forward vector. This is the same vector that I would get if I held just the forward key. Now by using a dot product between said forward vector and the vector created from the keys that I'm actually holding, like holding for example the right key, will give me a value between one and minus one. In case you don't know, the dot product between two perfectly aligned vectors is one, between two perpendicular vectors is zero, and between two vectors that are aligned but go the opposite directions is minus one. And then we have everything in between, basically. So coming back to our example, if I'm holding the right key, the dot product between the input forward vector and the vector created by holding the right key will be zero because those vectors are perpendicular to each other. Then I can use an invert cosine and a radians to degrees function to convert the value that I got from my dot product to an angle value. So now, Holding the forward key will give me a value of 0 degrees. Holding the right or left key will give me a value of 90 degrees. 
and holding the back key will give me a value of 180 degrees. So now it's just a matter of setting Rayman's rotation to the camera's rotation plus our input angle value. In case that's still a little confusing, let me put it this way. If you want to run forward, then I want Rayman's rotation to match the camera's rotation. Holding the forward key gives me an input angle value of zero, which is perfect because now this formula just sets Rayman's rotation to the camera's rotation. If I want to run to the side, I want Rayman's rotation to be perpendicular to the camera's rotation, so I need to add 90 degrees to the camera's rotation and set that as Rayman's rotation. Like we saw, holding the right key does just that. And then the same for running backwards. We need Rayman to face the opposite direction to the camera, so we need to add 180 degrees to the camera's rotation. I would like to remind that this works only because the camera is not parented to Rayman. Now, since I only get positive angle values, holding both the left or right key will make Rayman run to the right. To fix this, I multiply the input angle value by minus one whenever I'm holding the left key. So now holding the left key gives me negative 90 degrees and Rayman starts running to the left. Finally, I need to use a lerp to rotate Rayman because otherwise he's just gonna snap to the desired rotation and I need him to rotate smoothly. For anyone that doesn't know, lerp stands for linear interpolation. And there we have it. When I hold the left key, Rayman walks around the camera to the left, and when I hold the right key, he moves to the right. All the way around. I can even move to the side by pressing the back and forth keys. So the next thing I want to make is falling and snapping to the ground. As I want Rayman to be pushed down by gravity at all times when he's not on the ground, I will first create a state called is falling. The reason for not wanting gravity to work when Rayman is grounded is that I'm afraid it will make him slide around when he's on steep angles. So the gravity is just a downward vector that moves Rayman every frame at an increased rate until it reaches some kind of max value. For the ground snapping I use the sphere cast. The way this works is the sphere shape is traced from Rayman's location to a location not too far beneath his feet. And if the trace detects colliding with something that means that Rayman should be considered grounded. If that is the case, then gravity is no longer applied and instead Rayman's location Z component is set to the location of the sphere trace impact. In other words, he gets snapped to the ground. In actuality, I'm using two sphere casts of different priority. One that goes from Rayman's center and one that goes from Rayman's back. First the middle one is checked and if it returns an impact, then the other one is pretty much ignored. But if the first one does not return any impact, then we check the second one just in case. I do this so that Rayman has a bit of leeway before falling off an edge. This is also where I determine what's the maximum surface angle on which Rayman can walk. The Z component of a normal vector from a flat plane is 1, and the steeper we go, the less and less that value is until it reaches minus 1 for when the plane is a ceiling. So if the impact normal Z component is less than, for example, 0.75, then I can make Rayman still not considered grounded which will make him continue falling. While we're at it, let me quickly add in gliding. The way I did this is just by decreasing the max gravity value while we're holding the, gr the glide button. Okay, sweet. Now, before we move on to collision, the only thing left is jumping. So the way I do it is first I move Raymond up just a little bit so the sphere casts stop considering him grounded. And then I set the starting gravity value to a positive, positive value instead of zero. So Instead of moving right away downwards, first Rayman moves up a little while until the gravity value hits zero and starts going into the negatives, making him start falling again. Now there's one more thing. All the cool platformers out there have this thing called Coyote Time. I believe the term comes from Roadrunner. So Coyote Time basically is this half a second where you can still jump even though you technically walked off the edge already. It's something you don't really notice when it's there, but when it's not there, it feels really bad to jump. If you want to try this for yourself, try jumping off an edge in Halo 1 and then do the same thing in Halo 2. The difference is very noticeable. As for how I implemented coyote jumping, I first made the boolean variable which allows Rayman to coyote jump when it's true. Then I set, the, set up a timer which fires as soon as Rayman stops being grounded. And as soon as uh, set time passes, the boolean variable switches to false, not allowing Rayman to jump anymore. All right, let's see how this is working. I can walk off the edge and fall. Awesome. I can jump, move around in the air while jumping. I can also glide. Cool. So now came the hardest part, and that was collision. 
Making Raymond stop in front of surfaces is pretty easy, you just use a raycast, but that's not really how games do it, isn't it? Usually when you walk into a wall, you slide along it. And this was really hard for me to figure out. A little too hard, in fact, at least at the time. I spent days working on Collision with very little progress, until somehow, luckily, I found out that Unreal Engine has a built-in slide along surface function in the pawn movement controller. And as soon as I implemented it, I never had Rayman fall through any surface again, it works flawlessly. There's even a tutorial on the Unreal Engine documentation page on how to use it. Unfortunately, I think it's just C++, so I actually lucked out here that I decided to make this pawn in C++. I think this is the only place in, my, in the whole project where actually using C++ was more beneficial to me than not. Of course, I don't want to say that you shouldn't use C++ or it's bad or something. I just want to say that I'm bad at C++. So coming back to the beginning of the video, that's why I have a movement component here in my constructor. And then here in the movement component, I have the slide along surface function that Unreal gave me. Since there's already a detailed tutorial on the Unreal Engine documentation page, I'm not going to talk about this too much. The gist of it is that you need to feed in where you want your pawn to be this frame. This I already have calculated thanks to all of the movement code that I went through in this video. And then this function checks if from your location to your desired location is any collision. And if there is some kind of collision, it calculates the slide vectors. Okay, I think connecting some animations to this whole thing will make it look really nice now. I won't go over the animation blueprint in this video yet because this is the most complex animation blueprint in the whole project, so I would rather start with something simpler. Therefore, if you're interested in the animation blueprint stuff, you need to wait until I get to the ninja crab enemy in the near future. Now, Rayman actually has one more non-combat related ability that we haven't talked about, and that's holding onto edges. So let's go over that. So first I use a line trace to find a climbable edge. I made a new game trace channel to have control over whether an edge should be climbable or not. Because this way if I set the collision for this channel to be ignored, then this line trace won't detect that edge. If this line trace found the climbable edge, I check if Rayman is falling and I check if the normal of the edge is flat enough for Rayman to grab. If this is true, I set Rayman to a holding edge state. And if he is holding an edge, first I set his location to the impact points Z component, so he's at the right height. And then I set the Z velocity to zero, so he's no longer pulled down by gravity. And then I use another trace. This one is here to rotate Rayman to be facing the edge he grabbed, because otherwise he would just stop in the air, but he wouldn't actually look like he's grabbing that edge. And here we have it working. In the future, I would like to add some kind of tracing for the individual hands so they stick to the surface better. But for now, this is good enough. Awesome. I think this is feeling really nice right now. There are two bugs that I would like to fix in this video before we finish off. The first one is when Rayman hits a ceiling when jumping, he doesn't actually bounce off it. He just sticks underneath it until gravity kicks in and starts pulling him down. And the second one it considers gliding. Look what happens when... I start gliding on a steep edge. It turns out I'm able to move upwards, which I don't want, of course. I handle both of these bugs mostly in the player movement component. For the bug where I hit the ceiling, if there was some kind of collision detected in the movement component, I take the impact normal Z component to check how steep the plane was. Like I said earlier, a flat ceiling plane will have the, its impact normal Z component equal to minus one. So if the impact normal Z component is anywhere near that, I set Rayman's Z velocity to zero. So gravity starts pulling him down right away. Now for the gliding bug, that happens because on these steep planes, the gravity vector is smaller than the slide vector that I get from the slide along surface function so he can travel upwards. So what I do is, again, I get the impact normal Z component of the collision, and I use it as a scalar for the max gliding velocity. So what this does is, let's say my max gliding velocity is, for example, 20. Once I start gliding into a wall, I increase my max gliding velocity accordingly. 
to kind of compensate for the sliding collision that's pulling me upwards. So as I'm flying into a wall, my gliding velocity will, will no longer be 20, but suddenly it'll be, for example, something around 30 or 40 or whatever it has to be. So I don't start flying upwards, but I keep falling down at a steady rate. Okay, as you can see, if I hit the ceiling, I start falling right away. And I also can't glide up. All right, that's all I have for today. In the next one, I'm going to go over player camera. So if you're interested in that, subscribe. And if you had a good time here, please leave a like. Goodbye.